Hey, everybody, it's Friday. We made it to the end of the week. I am super excited to have our partners from the American Association of Colleges of Podiatric Medicine with us here today. Um, kind of as usual, we have a, a short video um, to kind of introduce you to, you know, the idea of careers in podiatric medicine and a little bit about what podiatrists do. We've got Mr. David Green. I think he flashed his video on there. So you got a little hint there. Um, we've got Mr. David Green. There he is, the man. Um, he'll be with us after the video to answer some questions um, from our live audience. So for those of you who are joining in with us live uh, this morning, for me, uh, just after the noon hour, on the East Coast. Thanks for being here. We're happy to have everybody. If you have questions, if you want to drop something into the chat or into the Q&A box, we'll get to all of those questions today. If you're watching us on demand, as I know many of you will be, um, you can absolutely still email your questions in. And if I can't answer them for you, I will get them to uh, Mr. Green here, and he will do an excellent job of answering your questions. Um, just let's talk about podiatry for just one minute. We've talked a little bit about this already this month, there are uh, many ways to become a physician in the United States. And we've already learned a little, little bit about allopathic medicine. If you've been watching, those are the MDs, probably the most you know familiar physicians that folks are aware of. We've heard from naturopathic medicine, also considered a physician discipline in the US. So this is just one more pathway um, to those physician disciplines. And so this is podiatric medicine that we're going to learn about today. I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to roll this video and I'll see you guys on the other side of the video. Here we go. When I get on my motorcycle, it's just me and the motorcycle and the wind. I don't know how to put a number on that, but that's what it's all about for me. I was this close to not being able to do this ever again. noticed that my toes were getting sore. Pulled off my sock and took a look and I thought, oh, that doesn't look quite right. Maybe I should just go ahead and I'll go in this walking clinic and have the, you know, somebody up take a look at it. So I went in and uh, the doctor put me up on the table and uh, he takes a look and he said, no, that's not good at all. You need to go to the emergency room. So I took the antibiotic for the full 10 days, thinking, oh, this will clear up. Maybe tomorrow it'll be better. But it didn't happen. And I decided I needed to follow up and, and call a podiatrist. When Mr. Schultz first came to my office, immediately when I examined him and looked at his feet, I could tell that it was not an infection, but a vascular issue. He said, I don't want you to worry. You know, I don't want to panic you. But he said, this needs immediate attention. Vascular disease is very serious. You end up with uh, cholesterol buildup or fatty deposits, and they get stuck on the lining of uh, vessels. And when that happens, you end up with decreased blood flow, and the vessels also are not as flexible, so also decreasing blood flow. A podiatrist is uh, usually a first line for diagnosing vascular disease because a lot of the symptoms of uh, this condition are you know, presented in the extremities first before anywhere else. Once I saw a vascular issue, I immediately told Mr. Schultz that he had to see a vascular specialist. You know, I have some bad habits. I'm a smoker, not a good habit. Yeah, I'm invincible like most everybody else. Why would I have vascular disease? I didn't even give it a thought. You had a risk for vascular disease. Unfortunately, you may not always know risks such as high cholesterol, hypertension, diabetes, obesity, being on contraceptives. Smoking is probably one of the most common and probably most important risk factors that we often overlook. I had uh, blockage in an artery that was going to my left leg that had blood flow down to roughly 30% what it should have been. Could have cost me my foot, could have cost me my leg, you know, if it didn't take my life. I mean, it could have taken me out. I 
feel 100% better. I have no issue walking, no sore toe. I've given up my motorcycle. My motorcycle is my stress relief, my relaxation, my number one hobby. I can jump on that motorcycle, leave everything behind, except me and the wind. I mean, it's just a wonderful feeling. I pay more attention to my toes now that uh, I've had that issue. And yeah, believe me, I will. Uh, I would not hesitate if I have a foot issue, a toe issue, to go see a podiatrist for a minute. Lesson learned. Yeah, lesson learned. The feet are absolutely an early warning sign and one of the first places you should look for vascular symptoms. If you have concerns for risks for vascular disease or spot the symptom or sign of vascular disease, you should consult a APMA member of podiatrist. Going to my podiatrist saved my life. Simple, simple enough. Saved my life. There's no better outcome than that, you know. Did you? All right, everybody. So again, if you are wondering about where that video comes to us from, it again comes through our partners, which is the AACPM, American Association of Colleges of Podiatric Medicine, um, their partners, the APMA, um, was able to provide us with that video. And again, all of this is available on our YouTube channel. So if you want to see this video again, or you want to check out some of the other videos um, that we have in that, uh, that uh, podiatry playlist, you are absolutely welcome to go and watch all of them. They are all fascinating stories. Mr. Green, welcome. I'm going to turn my screen off so that it's just you and I having a chance to chat. So Podiatric medicine, it's its a little bit different, right? It, it's, it's a physician discipline, but talk to me about how somebody becomes a podiatric physician. Well, thank you, Mandy. It's great to be here today uh, with everybody and happy Friday, happy spring. Hope everyone's doing healthy. Um, I'm the director of the Office of Career Promotion for AACPM, so I've, I worked uh, a lot with our colleges to understand their programs, but also to help them um, promote podiatric medicine to the next generation of students. So to your question, Mandy, it is, um, it is a field that is quite intriguing. It's one that is highly rewarding. It is one that, you know, the interests that originate to, for a candidate to become an ultimately a DPM, those storylines vary in terms of how they got there. So there's an educational journey. There's a personal journey along the way to understand anything really from the knee down, which is quite a bit from your foot to your ankle, to your skin, because dermato dermatology, wound care, diabetes, you have so many different facets of the, the career of being a podiatric medicine professional, DPM. So one, first, I think somebody like in any pursuit of their academic and professional endeavors has to have a little bit of fire in their belly to pursue the next seven years of going off to college and doing a residency and taking exams, et cetera, to be uh, certified to be ultimately a surgeon. You are a physician. So it is, it is a highly um, enlightening career in the very positive aspects of, uh, I think the career has surprised many in terms of the quality of life. Um, the educational journey is going to be rigorous in the medical field, no matter what you choose. Everybody goes in knowing that. So you'll see on our website, you know, if you have an opportunity to peruse through there, you'll see the breakdown of what it entails in terms of your academic trail. But I think um, it's, it's highly diversified. I think what's enlightening for people to um, take that leap to apply to be DPM, they will find nuggets of enlightenment along that journey. So they have a very broad scope of practice, uh, very, very much diversified in the specializations that one could pursue. So in a longabout way, that's sort of touching upon uh, perhaps some other questions, but I, I, I think that one has to really have the, the fortitude to really understand what a DPM career pathway offers. And I think to that point, they're pleasantly surprised. It's, um, it's obviously um, something that we help on the application side, but as I mentioned earlier, we work with the school, the nine member schools of our association to really understand their uh, candidate pool because you really do need fit 
for such a program, like in any academic program. So that's a little bit of um, a background that I think goes to the, the point of how does one even think about becoming a DPM? It originates in multiple forms. Correct. Yes, absolutely. That's fascinating. So I, you kind of started to go down this, but I'm going to ask a real specific question. And this is also, you know, you've got to, I'm going to warn my audience here. If you have a question and you want to get it out there for David, put it in the chat, put it in the Q&A box, and I promise I will work it in. If you're listening on demand, drop us an email. I absolutely will continue to answer questions. But David, you started to kind of go down this path, but what kinds of patients do uh, DPMs treat? And I know that that video started to kind of talk a little bit about the, the conditions that patients might you know, present with, but tell me about their patients. What, what, who, do, who do podiatrists treat? Yeah, obviously I touched upon the different specialty areas and that originates by a problem that one has with anything from the knee down. So diabetic patients are a big component of treatment, um, wound care, um, growing pains for younger children. Uh, many of us have seen that or experienced it ourselves. Arthritis, um, you know, if, if, if there is something that is gonna be your traditional uh, hanging ingrown toenail, bunions, yes, but there's much more to it than that. The common problems for sure, but look, we stand on our feet a good part of the day and those two little things require some maintenance. So you can imagine um, all the health issues that are related in terms of who the profile of the patients are. It is highly diversified. Again, going back to the specialty areas and um, fractures, sprains, you name it. So all age groups, all ethnic backgrounds. And I think we, we've all at some point uh, have either twisted an ankle or had that ingrown toenail or unfortunately had a significant wound that required somebody to specialize in the knee down. And so ankles you know it's interesting within the foot itself there's 26 bones so that in itself leads to a lot of areas of nerves bone structure skin muscle so the the dpm is highly versed in treating these um, multitude of patients in that capacity that's awesome now are they only in hospitals you mentioned you know they're surgeons where else um, besides hospitals would you find a, a podiatrist yeah, obviously many have their, you know, have or have joined a, a private practice. There are private or group medical groups. There's the VA hospital, the government. You can imagine, let's look at the military, uh, VA hospitals, uh, wound care, you know, that's around the world. So sports medicine, sports teams, um, yeah. hospitals, uh, clinics, you, you get the picture. So where these injuries occur, you also have need to have the capabilities of geographically uh, DPMs and dispersed around the regions to be able to serve the communities based on these multitude of injuries and multitude of specialty areas that are required for treatment. So it really varies. And the good thing about being a DPM is really you can, to a degree, of course, chart your own course. You can have that life work balance. You can have a lot of that in a private practice or group. So you have those at your disposal to be able to plot your journey forward in that capacity. And David, um, you know that uh, we hosted that panel yesterday evening, and you guys were great in helping us connect with Ms. Liz, Lindsay Cano. Um, she was the podiatry student. If you haven't gone in and watched that on-demand um, student panel from last night, I really encourage you to go. We hosted it on Thursday, the 24th. It's on-demand now. It's available for everybody. But uh, Ms., uh, student Dr. Cano, I, I love to talk about our student doctors, um, she was really detailed about how much joy she found in connecting with the community and bringing services to her community just there in Miami at Barry University School of Podiatric Medicine. So it was such a joy to have her last night. Thank you for connecting us. Um, so, you know, David, um, I don't have any qu questions in the chat, so I'm going to ask my final question then. How does, you know, we've got lots of students watching. So, you know, the junior in high school, that senior in high school, how does somebody who it's starting to resonate, right? They're starting to ask those questions like, this kind of sounds like something I'd like to do. How do those students or how do college students watching learn more and, and, and really discover podiatric medicine, which is the podiatry tagline? It's fantastic. So yeah, tell us how to learn more. Yeah, so certainly our website has a, a wealth of information. 
That's AACPM.org, right, David? That's your website. Absolutely, and we are we are constantly updating um, in statistics, um, profiles of, of uh, students, and obviously we're connected with each of the schools, the nine member schools. You'll you'll get direct connection to them. So we have a plethora of opportunities for you to learn more on there. So apart from that, we also have on Thursday, April 21st, we have a virtual career fair uh, that will take place from 11 to 6 Eastern time. We will have current students, resident panels. We will have an opportunity for you to um, hear from an academic advisor on top of some admissions information. Okay. And I really encourage you to check that out. It's on our website under our events. And also the third, I think is really important, is talk to your academic advisor. Um, shadow, you know, the opportunity at some point you'll need to shadow. So talk to students who have shadowed or are shadowing. Have those opportunities to kick the tires, if you will. Um, it, of course, do your due diligence, do your research, check out the, you know, you should, you should look at several schools in terms of potential institutions where you see yourself pursuing the career of podiatric medicine kick the tires, it takes time, it takes research. It's a big commitment. And also, you know, you have um, other other opportunities to be able to, you know, and they're listed on our website, like Step Into Podiatry, you can learn about mentoring and what that's all about down the road. So we have these connections with um, other associations and other resources that you'll find of value. And ask those questions. It's, it's, it's very important for you to you know, from the admissions standpoint, the schools want you to be the right fit. Well, what does that mean for you? It means your career for the next seven years is significantly tied up. So we, as the academic institutions and, and the representatives of that, want to make sure that you are provided with the uh, effective tools to make those calculated uh, decisions on the academic and professional front. So the, the opportunities are there. Um, don't be shy. You know, one of the things that I took away from last night's uh, panel was you know, there was a bit of boldness to it, right? In other words, you know, this was important to me, so I pursued it. You know, one thing I see with DPMs or students pursuing the field is they're very passionate. They're determined. <laughs> you cannot yeah, be shy. Yeah. Cannot, you cannot be humble. And, um, you know, like the diversity initiative last night, we want to bring that into the mainstream. You know, so I see the common DNA here of the podiatric student is, you know, there's this willingness to learn, there's an eagerness, and, and to my initial point, there's sort of that burn in the belly, and so harness all that in your due diligence of research and, and, and probe a little bit with those tools that are out there for you to learn more. I think that's an effective way for you to decide if it's right for you, but, you know, start with your advisor. You know, the, the advisors also have a lot of information. Yep. You know what, David, the, I, I don't know that we have had somebody make that recommendation yet all month long. And let me just make a plug here for, you know, one of our partners. I know that they are a partner of AACPM, but it's the NAAHP advisors, partners with HPW. We also have the um, NCHSE Association. So now we're talking about your high school science teachers. And for those of you in college, your pre-health advisors office. Um, these folks, they know a lot and they would love to share with you their expertise on this field and the many fields that they advise for. So, you know, and, and I say this to you, if you stop in and, and you ask a question, hey, I'm interested in podiatric medicine, what do you know? And your advisor or your health science educator says, I don't know, your next step should be Let's learn about it together then. So, and David, you've given us some great resources, again, on your website. Um, watch HPW's social media because we'll be running some, uh, some information about that upcoming uh, uh, virtual fair so you can get some details about dates and times just by hanging out on HPW's uh, Instagram. We'll make sure we get those out there for you. David, I just want to say thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us for a little bit. This is always fun. I love these little short, quick interviews. I think that they're so informational for our audience. And I want everybody to have a fantastic weekend. Look out for some self-care Sunday. We've got a yoga self-care Sunday coming up. So you'll be able to find that uh, online on the, the Sunday uh, session. And uh, we'll talk to everybody next week. A great weekend, everyone. Thank you all.